have Barry Ritholtz today. We're lucky to have Barry today <laughs> of uh, Fusion IQ, big picture blogger. Everybody knows Barry in the markets. All right. You've been following this. You know, you know, you know that it's a record. You know all that stuff. Forget all that stuff. Right. Is this record, is this move in the Dow, is this built on vapor or is this built on rock? Is this something solid? What is this all about? Uh, it, it's, it's built on something a little in between. We know from history that after the markets get clocked 50% or more, you're invariably followed with a substantial rally on average about 70%. So at least the first part of this rally is, mm -hmm. is a rock-solid foundation. That's exactly right. The second half, the argument goes, is built on inorganic matter, primarily Fed liquidity and generosity. And we've seen massive improvement in earnings, and we've seen massive improvement in liquidity. The rest of the economy has been lagging behind. So the counterargument is, well, a lot of this is driven uh, by Fed. Uh, truth be told, if the Fed wasn't doing QE4, and by the way, that'll, that'll be the last QE mm -hmm. because it's open-ended and can right. go on forever, um, the market would likely be anywhere from 20 to 30 percent lower. 20 percent lower. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you talk about the economy. It's very interesting because you, you like to think that these indexes reflect not only the companies that are in them, right, but the economy that those companies operate in. I and mean, that's the idea. If the Dow's doing well, that must be a sign that the economy is doing well. Uh, unemployment's very high. We know the GDP is barely growing. Profit growth, actually, you know, it's not very good the last two quarters. I is there a disconnect between what we're seeing in the indexes and what's going on in the real world? Um, there's pretty much always a disconnect. I, I think a lot of people hang on every economic data point as if it's going to translate into Dow gains or market gains, but the reality is that very often, you know, which economy are we talking about? Keep in mind when you're dealing with a broad index like the S&P 500, uh, half the profits come from overseas. Mm -hmm. So the U.S. economy is only responsible for about half of it. You take an even bigger cap index like the S&P 500 with much larger companies that are much more international in scope, they're getting an even greater percentage of their gains from overseas. So while we look at the U.S. economy, the real question is, how's Europe doing? Eh. How's yeah. South America doing? Better. And how is Asia doing? Definitely improving in a lot of places, although China remains the yeah, wild you're card. you diplomatic with that. I got to ask you one, one last question. We're making a big deal out of this. The media cares. It's a number. Everyone loves these juicy numbers. Do traders care about this? Um, to some degree, if they're long, they're certainly happy to see it. We prefer to see new all-time highs in broader indexes, which could very well mark the end of the secular bear market that began 14 years ago. Once the, all the major indexes are below, above that line in the sand, they get above previous highs, you could say the secular bear market that's been with us for all this time has uh, come to an end. Got a long way to go with the NASDAQ conference. Absolutely. A long, long way to go. All right, Barry Ritholtz, appreciate the time. Thank you very much.